To make fusible pieces, I use fusible webbing. There are many different fusible webbings that you can enjoy it. Depends on a project that you wanted to make. If you're making a soft baby quilt, use the lightest weight fusible webbing because you want your quilt to be nice and light. If you're making a uh, wall hanging, you want a little bit stiffness into your pieces to keep the wall hanging nice and stiff hanging on your wall. I chose a fusible webbing that is going to give me nice results, that it's going to give us a little bit of that stiffness. I place my fusible webbing over my pattern and all the pieces are reversed on this pattern, so you don't have to worry about reversing them. And now with a pencil, I'm going to draw right on a line to trace my pieces, just like this. Draw right on a line. And yes, if your hand is shaking just a little bit, that's okay. You're giving your fingerprints to your appliques. Once I have drawn my pieces onto the fusible webbing, I like to keep them all together, all my leaves, my circle, my bird. The next thing that I'm going to do is cut them. I cut the leaves apart. And remember, when you're tracing your pieces, always leave a little room between your pieces, at least quarter inch, so that way you can cut it apart and don't get too close to the line. Whenever I finish cutting my pieces, I leave at least one eighth of an inch around the edges. That allows me to have fusible webbing all the way to the edges. Next part, we're going to move into pressing our pieces into the fabric. I love choosing charm packs uh, and layer cakes for my fabrics. With layer cakes, I get a great variety of colors. This layer cake right here is from Jelly Bean Collection. It gives me blues, green, reds, perfect variety of batiks to do a lot of fun, small applique pieces. I like to press on an ironing board just like this one, where there is a piece of plywood, thin layer of bedding, wrapped with a muslin. It is a great surface to press fusible pieces. I like to use an iron that has a T-fall finish on it, no water in it. Remember, do not use steam with fusible webbing. We don't want to do that. And the setting on my iron is on cotton. I always start with warming up the surface. So I warm it up my surface, I place my fabric, and you have to place your fabric wrong side up. Then you press your fabric to get rid of any wrinkles, any wrinkles so that way the fabric is nice and smooth. What is nice about batiks, they don't really have a wrong and a right side. One side is more colorful than the other, so choose which one appeals to you the best. Batiks are great for fusible appliques because when they fray a little bit, they don't show any wide edges, so they are wonderful for that. Okay, we press our fabric, there is no wrinkle, it's time to place our pieces and you can be fussy about it. You can look at it, the color. If you want your leaf to shade from dark to light, sure, place it that way and grab that color as you please. I sometimes like to just place my pieces and be surprised what comes out, out of it. With the iron, I place it over. One, two, done. Can you imagine how fast I have pressed it down? The main part of creating your fusible pieces is to remember, do not overpress. Because if you overpress, the pieces get stiff and you're not going to have fun when you stitch them down. So we want to just slightly touch with the iron, just slightly touch one movement, setting on cotton to release the fusible webbing from the paper. Okay, our pieces are fused in place, and just remember, when there is a larger ones, you have to do them as well. And when I cut out our lar my larger pieces, like the vase right here, that basket right here, many times I cut the center right out. Let me show you another example, like the umbrella. I did that, I cut it out, they call it a window it out, because I don't want the fusible webbing right here in the middle. I want it to be nice and soft. For wall hanging, I want the stiffness, so I'm not going to cut it out. I'm going to leave it exactly as it is, but for a baby quilt, like the umbrella block, I would have cut this out 
to have less of the bulk, the stiffness into it. So again, place my fabric down, make sure I press it, no wrinkle. I look at it as the colors are just beautiful. Place my piece, my basket, and starting from the center, one smooth move, another one, and look, I have fused it in place. Next step is to cut our pieces out. As soon as I fuse all my pieces to the right colors of fabric, I enjoy sitting down and with the smooth, long cuts, long cuts, keeping my fabric in a pivot of the scissors, right here in a pivot of the scissors, I'm gonna make smooth cuts. Do not cut with the tips of your scissors because you are going to fray your edges and make them ragged. No, we don't want to do that. We want to do nice, beautiful, smooth cuts. And I love doing that. And sitting and enjoying and looking how beautifully my pieces are going to come out. And as soon as I finish cutting, I take a look at it and it's a perfect leaf. In case you want to save some time and you do not want to do prepare your own fusible pieces, we have amazing laser cut pieces for you. And this package is Jelly Bean Collection Package. This package is the one I used on our wall hanging today. So simply, you're going to open the package and enjoy all pre-cut, laser cut pieces for you. Fusible webbing is already on it. The edges are laser cut, so they're slightly cinched and they're not going to fray as much as the one that you have made. I really like those and I use them very often on my quilts. And they save a lot of time in choosing a lot of, of colors and fabrics because they're already color-coded and matched up for you exactly as my projects. Another way to prepare your pieces is to use AccuCut blades, just like this one. This provides you with all of the shapes and you can use it and still use your own fabrics. So where first thing you have to do, take a piece of fabric, lay your fusible webbing onto it and then run through your cutter and prepare all your pieces. Mm -hmm.